Hi, and welcome back to your third Xcode programming tutorial. In our last tutorial, we made a basic Hello World application. Today, we're going to learn how to switch views in an application, or activities, or screens, or whatever you want to call them, so you can have a multi-window application that can do more than one thing. We're going to look at a few ways of doing this using storyboards, and how we can do it, say, when the application opens, when you click a button, and many more ways. So let's get started. I've opened up Xcode and I'm going to create a new Xcode project. For now I'm going to do a single view application and we're going to add another view. It is a fairly simple thing to do and I'll show you how. In our product name I'm just going to call this switch view. And I'm just going to make it iPhone. Make sure you're using storyboards otherwise none of this will make any sense whatsoever. And then click create and you've got a new Xcode project. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new view. To do this, we need to create a .h and a .m file for view controller 2, which is what we'll call it. You can call it anything you want. You can call it info view or my second view, whatever you want, really. So the first thing we do is we're going to our storyboard, and as you can see, we've got one scene, but we need another scene of view. So to do that, click on this zoom out button, click on the text that says view controller, and move it to the side so you've got a bit of working room. Then, in our objects panel, down in the bottom right corner, I'm going to drag in this first object, which is a orangey circle with two squares inside it. Just a view controller. And I'm just going to drag that into my scene. I can drag it anywhere, right here or up there. It doesn't matter. Then I'm going to zoom back in. So now I've got two views. The only issue being that this one, if I want to control it, I can use viewcontroller.h and viewcontroller.m. But I've got no means of controlling this one. View controller dot H and M are called classes, and each view, which is one of these, has its own class. So a screen is made up of a view and a class. So we've got a new view, but now we need to add a new class. So to do that, go on right click go into your view controller dot M to begin, and then right click on switch view and click new file. And then make sure you're in iOS Cocoa Touch and select Objective C class. We need to make it a subclass of UI View Controller. And we'll call it my second view. And make sure these boxes are both not ticked unless you're using an iPad of course, in which case you can select targeted for iPad, but it makes no difference seeing that we're using storyboards. Click next and click create. Don't change the save location. Uh, it's by default put itself in our supporting files, but I'm going to drag it up into underneath view controller. I'm then going to go command B, which builds a project, essentially the same as saving a project. Then, we need to do, is we need to create, a, well, set the storyboard's scene to have the same class, my second view, dot .h and dot .m. This is fairly easy to do. Go into main storyboard dot storyboard and select the second view. Make sure you haven't selected just the view, you need to select the whole view controller. To do this, you can select the little, bot the little black box down the bottom, and you'll notice a blue outline will appear. Otherwise, you can just click on it in the hierarchy view. Then we need to change tabs. You'll be in the attributes inspector marked with a slider, but we need to go into the one that looks like a newspaper, the identity inspector. You'll notice it has no class, but we're going to give it a class. My second view, and I'm going to type M and it'll come up straight away. Then just press enter. Now, any code that I put in my second view dot h and dot m will interact with this view here. So let's add a button to the ver first view. And we'll call it go to second view. I showed you how to do that in the first tutorial. So if you haven't watched that, I recommend going and watching it now. Now we need to make it so that when we press this button, it takes us to this view. Unlike a regular action where you'd hook up an IB action in the .h file by going into our split attributes and special editors, like we did in our last tutorial, we can merely do a very basic thing. All we need to do is right click on go to second view controller as if we were going to create an action, but instead drag it onto my second view. So the whole view is gone blue. Then we need to select modal under action segue, otherwise the application will crash and a little circle with an arrow coming out of it will appear. You'll notice that'll stay there no matter where I move my screen. 
If I decide that I don't want to add the screen change, I can just delete it. But I do want to do it. So I'm going to go back and create it. Now I'm going to click on this arrow. And you'll notice that in the Identity Inspector, or the Attributes Inspector actually, you've got three options. An Identifier, a Style, a Transition, and an Animation. So let's give it an Identifier. This is just a way of identifying it so in our code we can manually make it change screens without having to click anything. So let's give the Identifier a uh, second view. That's what we'll call it. You can call it anything you want. It's just the name of the transition. Make sure the style is still modal, and if you accidentally set it as push at the start or custom, you can change that now. Then you can select a transition. There's four, and you can fiddle around with them as much as you like in just a moment. And I'm going to select animate to yes, because I want to add an animation. Now I'm going to run it in my iPhone simulator. So click run and wait for it to run in the simulator. Now if I click go to second view, I'm now on my second view. It's hard to see, so let me drag in a segmented control into my second view. Well, no, I'll drag in a button, seeing that we've used those before. And you'll notice that when I go into my second view, there'll be a button there. And there's our button. It doesn't do anything. So let's call this button back. And the same way that we just created our go to second view button, we can do the same thing with the back button. Right click and drag back to the first view. Then select modal and then click on the modal transition. Now it's kind of hard to see which is which here. So we can click on one, and we can see that I clicked on the bottom one, and that highlighted the back button. That means that that segue is triggered when I click the back button, and a segue is pretty much a view change. If I were to accidentally click on the top, you'd see that it would highlight this button, meaning that it was triggered when I pressed this button, which was our original one. So click on the back button, and we'll give it the identifier back. We run the application now. You'll see that it all should work smoothly. Go to second view and then go back. Go to second view and then go back. Another way to go back, which is more recommended, is to manually do it without a segue. So let's delete our segue and we'll code it, hard code it in. The one thing you will notice though is that it can get messy when you're using storyboards with a lot of segues. So try and arrange them in a way that you can easily see all the different segue transition arrows. Let me make my Xcode window wider, and then we'll go into our assistant editor, and we'll create an action for when the back button is clicked. So after add interface, add a curly bracket and press enter. Then right click on back and drag to under the curly bracket, select the connection to be an action, and we'll call the action back. Make sure automatic was selected so that you're not putting it in view controller.h, you're putting it in my second view.h. Then go into mysecondview.m, and you'll notice that a new method has been created for us. Before I continue, let me show you what the app looks like now. As you'll notice, when I click go to second view, the back view comes up from the bottom, and then when I click back, it comes up from the bottom again. It doesn't look like it's going backwards. It looks like it is just stacking up view upon view upon view. And it is, and that's why this method isn't recommended. And that's what we're going to change. So now I'll do a square bracket and type self, dismiss, Modal view controller animated. And go the second one. The first one will have a red line through it when you use type head. And it will say deprecated. That just means that it's no longer used in iOS 6. For animated, uh, you'll see that the first thing selected is a bool. And that's whether or not you want it to be animated. A bool is either a true or false value. Which in Objective-C is known as a yes or no value. I want mine to be animated. So in all capitals, I'll type yes. Completion, I'm going to do nil. And then close square brackets and press semicolon. Now you'll notice something strange when we run this application. If I click go to second view and then go back. Rather than just stacking view upon view, it opens up the view from the bottom and then it dismisses the view. It's a much better way of doing it. If we wanted to manually tr add this segue, manually present this segue, rather than having it when a button's clicked, which there are occasions you want to do this, Select your view controller, and by default, with automatic selected, it will open up view controller.h for you. Right click on go to second view and create an action. Connection, action, and name, and we'll call it go to second. 
and we'll make it a touch up inside. I'm just going to add those curly brackets so that if I were to add an outlet, I could. Now, this segue is still here. So what we need to do is we need to check what we named the segue. We named it second view. So let's go back to viewcontroller.m and in this method here we go self perform segue with identifier and the name of the segue was second view. And the sender is self. And that's all you need. This is where you put the name of your storyboard segue which remember we just looked at and it is called second view and so you can put your name there you don't need to change anything else let's run that now and you'll see that it'll manually I guess you could say and it's not really manual but it will uh, do the segue but rather than just doing it because we dragged a view to a view it's doing it because we've had this line of code you'll get this output saying attempt to present my second view while the presentation is in progress that's just because when we click the button, two things are happening. One, it's presenting the view. And two, it's, again, presenting the view. So that's obviously not a practical use demonstration. And you wouldn't just put that line of code in for the sake of putting that line of code in. You might put it in, say, view did load. So as soon as the view opens, it automatically goes to the second view, if you wanted that for some reason. So I hope you've learned something from this tutorial that you can use in your own app. And in our next tutorial, we'll look at further Xcode tools and create a better and more advanced app and learn more skills that we can use later on. So, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to like and subscribe. If you've got any questions, comment on the video or visit our website, 99centsappdevelopment.com forward slash get in touch. Or just go to 99centsappdevelopment.com and then you can go to get in touch yourself. So, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial once again and we'll see you next time.